podcast about knitting. I hope you'll enjoy. This After talking to you last week, I totally got some knitting mojo back and I finished my shawl and I cast it on a couple of new projects, so I actually have some things to show you. I also have been planning a trip to New York, where I'm going next week, New York City. So next week is New York and we will also talk a little bit about yarn shopping in New York and some traveling knitting this episode. Well, as I said, I actually have some knitting to show, so let's get started. Okay, so I have this shawl that is my finished object. It's the Juchu shawl by Maria Montga, and as I said tons of times before, it's my second Juchu shawl. I didn't like it so much, but I wanted something in a brighter color. So I don't know if it goes super well with my t-shirt that I have on today, but as you might have noticed, I usually don't dress up for you guys. <laughs> but this is my new shawl, and this is how it looks on. It's it's hot. It's this whole week. You can really tell how high summer is coming to the area, and I'm not used to it. Our air condition is not. It's working full speed, and it's of course better than outside, but it's still warm. So, yeah, this is how it looks on. Now, take it off. And this is how it looks. It have it has a lovely eyelets, eyelet pattern and a pico bind off. I probably have to block it again as you can see it's not it's still crawling crouching up a little bit. I don't think it's because my bind off is too tiny, I just think it's because I didn't block it carefully. I do not have blocking wires, but I've been thinking about getting them, but then also maybe I should consider getting them after my move. Uh, since I'm moving to Sweden after the summer then I have enough stuff to bring with me as it is. So yeah, this, this is the new show. And I'm looking forward to cooler weather. I know I will regret saying that when it's when it's winter, but I, I'm not really not used to this heat. Um, but when the weather is getting cooler, I will use it more. All the details are on my Ravelry product page, you can see there. And I like that it's a little bit variegated no pulling directly, I mean, but some variegation. So, yay! That's my finished object. So, I've started two new projects since last episode, and those are both socks. As I mentioned, I'm planning on making a pair of socks for my friend, and I've also casted on a pair of socks that was long overdue for myself. So let's start with the socks for my friend. Um, the socks I'm knitting for my friend uh, look like this. They, it's a, the pattern is called Paper Moon, and it's a com combination of cables and garter stitch. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. I got my eyes on it quite early in my knitting career, but maybe because I mean, I noticed it because I love the orange color it's knitted up in on the pattern. But I think also when you have a self patterning or self striping yarn and you want to do something more exciting than a vanilla sock, I think both cable and garter stitch goes well rather than lace. But you can find this pattern in three different sizes. But the basic thing, as I understand, is that you change the number of stitches between the, between the cables. The yarn is Souls and More from Joanne's. I think it was on sale. My friend had the yarn and I knit her pair of socks. Yeah, well, people say you can never have too many socks, but I mean, I, it's not like I need a pair of socks. And since I'm moving away, it's nice for, I, it's nice for me to leave a, a memory. I, of course, couldn't stop myself from doing a couple of changes. First change is that I changed the direction of the cables in the pan. They're all going in the same direction. But I wanted them to be, uh, so here I made it so they both are slanting outwards, downwards, like this, on the front side and the same on the back. Anyhow, um, also the instructions for the heel flap is a little bit unclear because it says continue with the established pattern even though you hadn't, have not established any pattern. If you don't pay for a pattern you can't really expect, my expectations are quite low and if it's great I'm really happy and then it's a way for me to know that that designer probably have a good way of writing also the paid for patterns so it's for me it's a way to try out if the designer's style of explaining stuff works for me. Um, but if it's otherwise, if it's just someone, you know, they made something, they put that there, 
I'm just glad they give me some instructions and but this time I'm usually competent enough to make my own choices and I kind of change things anyway. So here I made the, the ribbing on the heel but I did not make any patterning like the from the back of the leg. So here's the heel flap. Yep. Um, I think it looks nice. In, even if these probably will be more of indoor socks in case you want to put them in a pair of shoes. I don't know if patterning on the heel it will be great. Is there a difference between like structural patterns and color patterns? Or is it all just patterns? Whatever, you know what I mean. I mean I have the legs left and since the legs have padding also on the back of course they are much slower than the foot where you have uh, regular stockinette on the back side but it's okay this is since I've learned the, the pattern by now it's good TV knitting perfect for X-Files which is what I'm watching right now and then when the socks are done I will put in some squares with this pattern in my in my blanket my crochet blanket that I haven't been working on for some time but you know, now I have to soon have some sock yarn that I've used that I will use more of. Okay, so the next pair of socks is for myself, and they are from the the very popular pattern. Oh, that's another way of using the word pattern. Anyway, instructions. <laughs> the very popular pattern instructions. Uh, fine and dandy socks. This they look like this. They have these small flower stitches on them. Um, I luckily found a. YouTube video that someone posted uh, in the comments of the pattern how to do it because I couldn't really get the only written instructions with the video it worked out fine or thank you fellow knitter out there posting the link to the video in the comments to the pattern and um, this yarn I bought when we were in Charlottesville Virginia and then I had uh, and I wanted something that was you no know, slightly variegated but not yeah just slightly variegated not a lot variegated so that I could both, so I could use for this specific pattern and then I also want to try out to knit two at a time and I came home with this ball and I realized it's just one ball then I said to myself why should this stop me because it's center ball so I was knit one sock from the inside and one sock from the outside and they are, I can see a little bit more brown speckles in this one than in this one but it's, it's nice it's a, the color of the yarn is Malabrigo which is also a first for me. It's nice. I'm not super excited about it compared to how some other people seem to treat it, but it's nice. Not bad. And the colorway is Playa and it's the Malabrigo sock yarn. And for the heels and toes, I am using this brown ish copper colored yarn. And this is a yarn from Knit Picks. It's their gloss fingering so not really it's more of a luxury yarn than a sock yarn because it has silk in it and not nylon but I I was kind of disappointed because I wanted this color to be orange or I thought, thought it was orange when I saw it on, on their website but it's kind of a brown copperish and I was disappointed I didn't know what to do with it then I realized I like how it goes with this blue fire color from Malabrigo and I decided let's make some luxury socks I will also use it for the cuff. So my fine and dandy socks and they are also, I just passed the, I just finished the heel today. One, you did one heel out yesterday and the other heel today. And um, yeah. Move on to upcoming. Speaking of using yarn, the question is how much yarn should I buy before I move home to Sweden? Yes, because yarn here in the US, it's you can get cheaper yarn and there is also a bigger variety because it's a bigger market and I would say in general consumer goods are cheaper here than they are in Sweden, which partly is because salaries are lower, but still. So, But on the other hand, I have a lot of things that I want to bring, but yarn is not too heavy and um, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, as I said, lots of trips coming up first one is next week and it's I'm going to New York I'm going to New York for a full week Monday to Sunday I'm going with a bus up there and um, since I work free during the summer I have all the time and I said I want to see New York City I've been there for two shorter trips one for like three days and one for yeah like one day 24 hours more so I wanted to do a little bit more so I'm planning on going to see all the 
Nostis, MoMA, I haven't been to Natural History Museum, and also some of nerdy things like Math Museum. I don't know if it's only for kids, but I want to check it out. But more importantly, I am going to some yarn stores, of course. I heard a lot about Knit the City. That's like the one people talk about, but I also realized there is also Pearl Soho, Downtown Yarns, The Yarn Company, Lion Brand Store, and so on. So if you're watching this before the 11th or so when I'm leaving for New York, give me your tips post down here below. Um, and So tell me which yarn store in New York City I mustn't miss. If you do it after I've been there, yeah, it's be good for future people, but maybe I will be a little bit sad if I've missed it and you tell me afterwards. <laughs> We're going doing a road trip to Niagara Falls in Toronto later this in August. And then I am also planning on going to Japan. And then by the end of August, I'm flying back home to Sweden. So there will be a lot of traveling this summer, which is fun. I'm super excited about all of the trips I'm doing. But there will also be a lot of travel knitting. And of course, we all know you shouldn't bring anything too big. Uh, you shouldn't bring anything that is very complicated and you need to sit with your hat and up all the time. On the shawls are good if they are, I mean, especially starting on the. You do, but you usually don't want something that is already cast on. Do you usually. What do you usually bring when you knit? That's like the week's question. What do you usually bring? For travel knitting, do you have you differing different projects in mind when you planning on going by bus, car, or air flight, or any other kind of transportation that you should do? Do you bring different things if you're going on a long trip rather than if you do on your do on your daily commute? And and this constant problem: how do you estimate how many projects do you really need to bring? Maybe I'm a little bit cautious about bringing my metal needles abroad on, when I'm flying. I've never had any trouble with my, with my wooden needles. I also have a small scissors. It's not very sharp, but it blade is like this size and it's not pointed. So it's not very sharp, so it's not very good. So if I lose it, it would not be the whole world. I would probably not bring corner work on a trip because they, there is usually a pattern there. I can't that I can't remember by heart and sitting with instructions is it could work but it's also a little bit inconvenient yeah definitely need to bring something for the bus up to New York but I mean it's eight four maybe five hours bus ride you don't need more than like one project one pair of socks I wonder if I have anything that I want to do hmm. so how do you think about this please help me out here okay so rambling ending here so other upcoming projects, I have this brioche shawl that I've been talking about starting, but I don't want to, I cannot, I have now, this will be my first brioche. I have to sit down and learn it properly and I can't really just bring it along on a trip, so, um, and I haven't even boiled, boiled up my yarn yet. See, next week, um, you will know what I bought because I can tell you. And I can also tell you if I buy any new yarn in New York. So speaking about yarn, a couple of other of you have told me that you have this diary where you put in a piece of the yarn and the label and very... I, I, I keep things on Ravelry digitally maybe because I tend to move so often or... I like notebooks but I don't know, I probably would never... And it's not so much looking at yarns that I've used for different projects but yarns that I have like this extra ball of yarn lying around. What is this? Usually I remember. But then sometimes I come across something in my box that I don't remember, and then I'm screwed. Hopefully I remember what I used it for, and I can check on Ravelry. I wish there were more colour. <laughs> well, as you can tell, I really don't have anything more to say today. Um, despite having three projects to show you, and a whole and travelling rambling, this is it. Thank you all for watching. I'm overwhelmed by how many of you that likes to watch my podcasts have subscribed uh, thank you for watching uh, today too uh, take care happy knitting bye